Amholt, Sweden was the birthplace of the world's former richest person in the furniture industry, born on March 30th, 1926. A member of the Kamprad family, Ingvar Fyodor Kamprad founded IKEA, which became the largest furniture retailer of all time. Ingvar grew up on a small farm in Samland, Sweden called Elmterid. In those days, Sweden was subjected to great poverty. The difficulties he endured became a blessing in disguise as he incorporated the values that he had gained during these tough times into IKEA's ethics. A poor agricultural climate plagued Kamprad's province in Sweden, making farming impossible for families to make a living. It was difficult for people to make ends meet, so they took on entrepreneurial ventures and sold handmade products. As a result of the economic crisis, many children were working alongside their parents to make ends meet. Seeing this, Engvar offered to help. While many of their children worked on the farm with their parents, helped run their father's store, or worked in their mother's guest house, Engvar did things differently. As he turned six, Engvar began to sell matches for pennies. Engvar realized he might have a better chance of selling more than his already existing inventory with his matching business. In his tenth year, he was selling Christmas decorations, pencils, and even fish. To begin his distribution, he used his mother's bike until he was able to afford his own. The young Kamprad was a fast learner and an expert with numbers. He thus figured out how to keep prices low while also making money for his family. When Ingvar was 14, he moved to a nearby boarding school. The move did not hinder his business, but rather promoted it. His bedside table was filled with belts, pens, watches, wallets, and other school-related items. Meanwhile, his father awarded him a small amount of money for his academic performance, even though Ingvar is dyslexic. After collecting this little money, in 1943, age 17, he founded a company called IKEA, which stands for Ingvar Kamprad from Elm Tarid Agunerid. IKEA's first store sold household items such as pens, wallets, and picture frames. The company didn't enter the furniture business until five years later. He began delivering his products with milk trucks in 1945. From the beginning, Comprad made IKEA's mail-order catalog an integral component of their business. Since Sweden was a mostly rural and isolated country, and getting to the bigger cities was challenging, especially during the 1940s and 1950s. Ingvar has always been enthusiastic about learning and growing his business. As his business grew, he realized the key to success was finding the easiest, most affordable distribution. His dream began with distributing cheap, well-made products to the public. Therefore, IKEA began as a direct importer and mail-order company that sold watches, pens, and other items. His success was ultimately attributed to furniture, because of the high demand for furniture in Sweden after the war. With IKEA's first furniture brochure, Ingvar writes that customers would receive more for showing a reasonable interest. He once said, My main competitor, Gumars Fabriker of Avesta, is a well-known furniture seller in Cagnui. Seeing his advertisement in the paper, I also decided to give it a try. I began my furniture business by accident to outdo my competitors, and this has determined my fate. The low prices of Ingvar, however, led to protests from manufacturers in 1955. A turning point came when the company transitioned into selling flat pack furniture, furniture that's sold in pieces that are flattened to make transport easier and are assembled by the purchaser. This was a fundamental shift in IKEA's furniture philosophy. As IKEA aimed to appeal to the middle class, it offered stylish and affordable furniture. The idea was that Ingvar could offer a unique furniture brand to all sections of society, rich or not, at the same time. By packaging flat, shipping costs and shipping damage were minimized, while store inventories are increased. Ingvar designed and reorganized IKEA stores to satisfy customer expectations. Besides Sweden, the first stores were opened in Norway and Denmark in 1963 and 1969, respectively. From there, it wasn't long before IKEA ruled Europe. Soon after, the company opened its first store outside of Scandinavia, and within the next decade, 
IKEA's popped up around the world in places like Japan, Australia, and Canada, where lines formed at grand openings. IKEA's largest market is Germany, where 52 stores are present. The U.S. has 51 stores. The company currently operates 433 stores across 38 countries. As far as historians are concerned, Kamprad's trading hobby was a result of inheritance. A company belonging to his grandfather was near bankruptcy in 1897. When the mortgage could not be paid, his grandfather committed suicide. It was Ingvar's grandmother who saved the business. So, using her willpower and perseverance, she guided her grandson over the obstacles. He was greatly influenced by the influence of his grandmother, Frances, as well as the entire family. She had a very simple upbringing, but was incredibly intelligent. According to people who are close to him, Ingvar Kamprad is an extraordinarily successful marketer and a man of uncommon wisdom. He admits he has many faults and that he's a bit stupid. Even so, he remains extremely knowledgeable and sharp. Never once did Comprad borrow money. IKEA was kept private by him. Over the course of his business career, Ingvar Comprad earned over $46 billion. Despite his great wealth, Comprad continued to visit new IKEA stores around the globe until his death in 2018 at the age of 91. During his 20 years of driving the same Volvo, he also flew economy class. The restaurant salt and pepper packets and tea bags from his meals were also reportedly recycled. He had a reputation for being press shy. He never even gave any interviews. When it comes to those strange product names, they follow a systematic system. As Angvar had dyslexia, he named them in a way that was easy for him to remember. Norway is represented by the names of beds. Sweden is represented by the names of sofas. The Finnish name for kitchen tables comes from geography. Danish names are mostly used for rugs. Scandinavian boys' names are mostly used for bookcases. Adjectives are the names for glasses and cups. Because IKEA stores are so large, they're often located on the outskirts of large cities. The people take a long time to reach the store, and one effect Ingard noticed was that they were shopping on an empty stomach. As a result, he decided to have a fast food joint in every IKEA store. IKEA has always tried to keep people in the store as long as possible so they can spend more. In fact, today, over 30% of customers go there just for the food. The menu was lighter, with a wide variety of salads, snacks, and desserts. The store forbids selling hot, strong-smelling food because its smell would get into the bigger store. The store restaurant was known for its chicken salad and ice cream desserts. IKEA restaurants offered job opportunities to women as well. Back then, restaurants weren't considered respectable places for women. However, store restaurants, which rarely served alcohol, made an exception. Women were able to earn a living and even meet out of the home at these places. Comprad left around half of his wealth to charity after his death, according to his will. The Stitching Inca Foundation was established in honor of Ingvar Comprad. IKEA is the parent company of Inca Holding, owned by this foundation. Until 2006, this foundation ranked as the richest charity in the world, a position subsequently taken by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. An act of charity was carried out by IKEA Australia, which matched every co-worker's donations and donated all revenue from the IKEA blue bag to help victims of the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. As reported by a Swedish business magazine in 2004, Ingvar was among the world's wealthiest people. Due to Ingvar's wealth being equal to the market value of IKEA at that time, this was not an accurate measure. Ingvar's wealth was estimated to be 23 billion US dollars in 2010 by Forbes magazine. A lawsuit preventing his family from accessing his funds caused his ranking to fall from 11th to 162 in the standings. A Bloomberg Billionaires Index published in 2015 ranked Ingvar Kamprad 8th on the list of the richest people in the world, estimating his net worth of 58.7 billion dollars. As a philanthropist and community leader, Ingvar was known for his simplicity and frugality. 
The company actively supports UNICEF and other prestigious United Nations committees. IKEA's development was the focus of Ingvar's razor-sharp attention. Ingvar was one of the most aspiring individuals one could imagine. His employees were encouraged to dress casually under his leadership and were treated like co-workers. Fun facts about IKEA. Number one, since 1986, IKEA's had its headquarters in the Netherlands, which had lower taxes than Sweden. Number two, IKEA opened its first store in Sweden in Almholt in 2016. The city now has a museum dedicated to the company, which showcases its history and evolution over time. Number three, IKEA sells complete flat pack homes called Bocklock House, introduced in 1996, which costs just a fraction of the regular house. Number four, IKEA is building up a real small town in London called Strand East and offers 480,000 square feet of offices, its own infrastructure, restaurants, hotels, and even schools. And number five, the famous Billy bookcase is actually named after IKEA employee Billy Lekshahal, and every minute, 15 Billy bookcases are made. A true entrepreneur, Engvar stands out as a great figure of the 20th century. His dedication and simplicity serve as a perfect example of how a real leader should lead. Engvar has demonstrated that nothing is impossible after founding a company in the face of poverty. Being a great philosopher, he once said, if you're working but are not incorrigibly enthusiastic, a third of your life has been wasted. So, this was the modest story of the IKEA founder. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Hope you'd like the video and share it with your family and friends. To get more inspiration, ideas, and advice for yourself, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. See you soon.